people have very different concepts or understanding of what bloating is. In this video, I will clarify what it is and explain the different causes. Hello, my name is Dr. Igi Suse and I'm a functional or integrative medical doctor and I've been in practice for over 35 years treating patients and especially those with gut-related illness. Welcome to my channel, Gut Health for Life, where I will be discussing all issues related to gut health and the microbiome. Looking through the internet, the word bloating is assumed to be understood by everyone as meaning the same thing, swelling of the tummy. Many patients come to me complaining of bloating and claim their tummies are bloated at the time of the consultation. Yet, when I examine them, I find no visible signs of distension. Others have visible signs of distension. Does that mean that those who have no bloating, it is all in their head? In one way it is, but it is not a psychological issue. It is related to the brain. Stay with me and I will explain. First, some clarification about the terms or words we use. Abdominal bloating and distension are two of the most commonly reported gastrointestinal symptoms and they are different. Abdominal bloating is characterized by feelings of trapped gas, abdominal pressure and fullness. Abdominal distension is defined as a measurable increase in abdominal girth, that is around the tummy. So people with bloating feel there is trapped gas and have abdominal pressure or fullness, but there are no visible signs of distension. Bloating and distension frequently occur together, although they can occur separately. They are extremely common symptoms, and studies have shown that these symptoms are present in up to 30% of the general population, and as high as 90% in patients with irritable bowel syndrome, commonly referred as IBS. 75% of the patients with bloating classify their symptoms as moderate to severe, and 50% that is half of the 75% report that symptoms interfere with their daily life. So it's a significant problem. Abdominal bloating and distension can develop for many reasons, including food intolerances. Certain foods, can, when eaten, can cause bloating. It is usually quite easy to identify if it's only one or two foods. But when they seem to bloat seemingly with whatever they eat, then there could be other reasons, and not just food intolerances. Fructose and lactose malabsorption can cause bloating, and these conditions can be diagnosed by breath testing. SIBO, this is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Let me explain to those who may not be familiar with the term SIBO. Normally, when you eat food, it goes into the stomach, to the small intestine, and then into the large intestine, and then out. The small intestine is about 20 foot long, and this is where the digestion and assimilation take place, to ensure complete absorption of digested nutrients, the body keeps the small intestine relatively free of bacteria. Otherwise, if there are large amounts of bacteria in the small bowel, the bacteria will be competing with, with the body for nutrients. There are a number of mechanisms that keep the small intestine low in bacteria. It is beyond the scope of this video to cover those mechanisms. If these mechanisms get interrupted, then bacteria that live in the large numbers in the large bowel can move into the small bowel. These bacteria can, can ferment the food coming into the small intestine and produce gas that leads to bloating. They may be uh, using up nutrients in the food as well, leading to deficiency. I find in my practice that it's common cause for undiagnosed low blood iron. SIBO is diagnosed by a breath test. Back to the other causes of bloating. Constipation and diarrhea can cause bloating. Dysbios, dysbiosis or abnormal balance in the microbiome can produce excessive gas from fermentation of foods. Abdominal, abdominal movement of the diaphragm. This is the large, this is a strange mechanism. Normally with a meal, the diaphragm, which is a dome-shaped muscle separating the, ch uh, the chest from the abdomen, that is the heart and the lungs from the gut, this diaphragm usually moves up to make way for the food coming into the stomach. In some people with this tension, the diaphragm works in the opposite way, moving down with the meal towards the gut. This action causes the abdomen to push outwards causing the abdomen to distend. The reason why this occurs is not yet understood. The other reason for bloating is visceral hypersensitivity. What I mean by that is there are exaggerated sensations received by the brain from the gut. Normally, if there is inflammation or some other cause for abdominal pain, the message that travels from the gut along the nerves up to the brain, and the brain lets you know as pain. In people with visceral hypersensitivity, the brain registers an exaggerated level of pain. 
Let me put it another way. Say the trigger from the gut is a level 2 out of 10, the brain in a normal situation registers as a 2, that is mild pain or just discomfort. In a person with visceral hypersensitivity, it may be registered as a 6 or 7 out of 10. In some people, just the abnormal movement of the bowel, which which should be a 0, may register as a 4 out of 10. These are people who are constant pain without any abnormality or disease state, but normal functioning of the gut. These people can benefit from gut-directed hypnotherapy, but the condition must first be diagnosed and eliminating other causes of bloating because there are some serious causes that I will talk about shortly. Stress, of course, can cause and aggravate bloating and distension and has to be addressed in the treatment. Now, there are some serious causes for bloating and distension, so it's important not to diagnose and treat oneself without first being properly addressed, assessed and diagnosed by a doctor. These conditions are stomach cancer, bowel cancer and ovarian cancer. The only initial sign for ovarian cancer may be bloating, so it's important not to overlook it. Some of the other serious conditions are celiac disease, diabetes, ulcerative uh, and underactive thyroid and a deficiency of digestive enzymes. Bloating is only a symptom, so we don't treat bloating, but we treat the cause of the bloating. The causes of bloating I've just talked about and are readily treatable. The investigations for the cause of bloating and the treatment have to be conducted by a suitably qualified health practitioner. So please don't make the diagnosis yourself based on a checklist that you've read. I hope you found this helpful and if you would like to follow me on future videos on the gut health, please subscribe to my channel below. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you.